but let's keep on rolling and let's talk a little TV. TV. So I could not find a good TV subject to talk about. And so I said, what do I want to talk about that me and Brendan have not talked about in the realm of TV? And I thought about what is my favorite memories of watching TV? Saturday morning cartoons. So me and Brendan came up with our top five lists of Saturday morning cartoons. And we're just going to we're gonna ramble them off. If you don't agree with us, I think you're crazy because we have 10 of the best Saturday morning cartoons you could ever get. But let's start it off. Brendan, why don't you hit us up with five through two? Don't give us one yet. Five through two. Okay. If that's how we're going to go, Brian. Rather than our other that's plans. But, uh, I don't know what our other plans were. What was our other plans? I was going to give you a short rundown of the history of Saturday morning cartoons, but that's okay, Brian. Oh, wait, wait, okay. wait, wait. Yeah, Brendan, Brendan, give us give us a quick rundown of where Saturday morning cartoons originated. <laughs> okay. Uh, as fast as possible. So Saturday morning cartoons started in the 1960s, and we're going oh. all the way through uh, the last few years. They finally died out. Like, they were dying last two decades. Mid uh, to late 2000s, it kind of died out, yeah. Yeah, but I was surprised. They, they started in the, the 1960s. Hanna-Barbera came up with uh, a lot of the big ones early on and some others. And in the, like, 90s onward, they started getting a bunch of restrictions from, from like, parent pushback groups and things like that uh, because of commercialization and violence and other things. But they they continued on and now they've kind of died out. That that's mm. your rundown of Saturday morning cartoons. But they are a big block of cartoons in the in the morning for kids. Yeah, awesome Some, times. Sometimes used in order to, for uh, what is it networks to fulfill their required uh, educational informative <laughs> programming block. That's why and those are the ones they put. Those are the ones they put on at like six a.m. Kind of cartoons. Yeah. yeah. So, but all right, Brendan, give us five through two for you. All right, that number five for me, Digimon. Digimon, really? Yes, Digimon, Digital Monsters. Uh, the first two seasons, I really enjoyed. I liked them more than Pokemon, and they were Saturday morning cartoon, and were one of the early animes that I saw and really got into. And that, you know, I also liked the little handheld monsters that we had, but. The cartoon I thought was good. It was good for a kid's cartoon, and it, it, I thought it was deeper than than Pokemon. Had a little bit of a of a darker edge to it. Um, I hear that the Japanese version was an even darker edge to it. That they they kind of censored out a bunch of stuff, but it it was a good time, and huh. it was an intriguing story. At number four, number reboots. Ah, uh, yep. yep, yep, reboots. Uh, yep, you know, yep. Yep. I'm surprised this isn't higher. If this, at some point in my life, this might be uh, higher. This was one of my favorite shows for yeah, quite some yeah. time. That and was one I'm, that me and Brendan didn't have to fight over on Saturday mornings. Reboot was on. We knew we were watching a reboot. Yes. And, and I'll say I was excited to see that they're, they're at least still in the works of a reboot sequel series, although I. I don't know how good it'll be this much later. I know they late. were supposed to have a movie of it that I was excited about like 10 years ago that never came out, but whatever. So. It, it's, it was a cool show. It had a lot of uh, you know intricate plot lines, especially later on, which some people didn't like, but I, I enjoyed the, the later plot lines um, yeah. when they were older and things like that. At number three, X-Men. Come on, how can you not okay. have X-Men? The 1990s uh, yep. X-Men, which was, as far as I'm aware, just called X-Men. It might have something else. Um, that was great. Again, it was kind of a, if, at least for kids, show a gritty take, um, showing like the real kind of X-Men stories. Had a good cast of the X-Men. Mm -hmm. Um uh, really, what everybody looks at X Men now—that's that's the cast. Everybody looks at the main group of X Men and says, "Where's Storm? Where's Wolverine? Where's you know those main they don't characters?" Talk about Jubilee as much, but Jubilee was a fun well, character right. in that. She was fun. Yeah, it did. It didn't have. Uh, and if you realize that Jubilee but... actually—I read something that Jubilee was actually the strongest of all the X Men on that team, but her powers weren't developed because she's actually making like subatomic explosions with her fingers when she's oh, shooting really? those fireworks. So if she could ever figure out to expand it out, which she does later on, she but, is the most powerful of all those X-Men. But they did do a bunch of the cool storylines. Like, they did do the mm -hmm. Phoenix storylines. They, they did the Apocalypse storyline. Yeah. yeah. And, and yeah, they, they did, did a lot, lot of, uh, uh, you know, the 
bloodline stuff with Rogue and, mm-hmm. and Mystique and, mm-hmm. and Magneto and, and all they, these. Well, they brought in they brought in Mr. Sinister. They did Cable. They did all those guys. Yeah, and when we talk about the X-Men movies now, really what Brian and I think back to is that show. Like, are they going to have exactly. this storyline? Are they going to have this character that we saw mm-hmm. played out in that format? Are we going to see that now in the show? I mean, granted, they had a lot of material to draw from from the comics, and the comics are the originals, but that show did a good job. And it did amazing. Us to them. Uh, I, for sure. I feel like I could probably still go back and watch it and enjoy it. Oh, I watched I watched it. It was on Netflix a couple of years ago. I watched it all the way through. Just as good. Holds there up. Go. It holds yeah, up. And there's not a lot that do. Like, there's a bunch that I would... It's true. Uh, there would be a time that I would uh, say, oh, definitely this show, but I have gone back and watched, like, a little bit of it and was like, oh, I can't even watch an episode of this. This is terrible. I'm done with this. Yeah. Um, it happens. And I'm doing number two too, right? Number two. All Do right, number, number two. two. King Arthur and the Knights of Justice, which is one that a lot of people don't know about. Very solid work. See, I actually kind of think of that more as a before school show because that came on like 7 a.m. I thought it was, a, it was a, I thought it was like an early morning Saturday morning. Like it was a 7 a.m. Saturday morning one. It was it one of those been, in that block been. before the, yeah. the main ones started. Yeah. Because the main one started about eight o'clock, yeah. But you had, you had a couple before then, yeah. yeah for for the kids that were early risers, like us, me. some t- some of the time. And sometimes, yeah. Sometimes I would get up for King Arthur and the Knights of Justice. I'll tell you that much. Um, that was a great like one to start the day off with usually, because uh, it was in that early slot. I guess they didn't have confidence in it, but uh, it was good, uh, especially the first season. Uh, I actually own the whole series. There's only two seasons because they canceled it after the second season. Um, yeah, but I can kind of see why the second season, which they actually call King Arthur Knights of Justice two, because clearly there's like a third of the companies involved pulled out. Um, uh, they made it more like most other Saturday morning cartoons and like GI Joes and things, which is which is fine, but it wasn't as good as that first season where gotcha. the, the the enemy the bad guys were competent. You really had the sense that King Arthur the the knights. Are on but then the, high school football team that got transported back. Yeah, to King that, Arthur's see, here's the other thing. There, it sounds like such a stupid concept. The it only is reason a why this concept, is even it was a on great this show. list is because a few years ago, my friends and I were were talking about weird Saturday morning cartoons. We talked about that. We're like, oh, that's probably really cheesy now. Let's go watch it and make fun of it. And we started watching. We're like, this is amazing. How did they pull off this concept of a bunch of college football players from the future going back to King Arthur's time and becoming knights? How do they pull that off? It worked. It worked. And the quarterback, the captain of the football team, became King Arthur. Yeah, whose name was Arthur King. And out. Arthur. So. <laughs> so. All right. So that was Brendan's five through two. Let me jump into my five through two. Uh, to start off, we're going to be similar. I have Reboot as my number five. Don't need to go any more into that because it was an amazing show. We already talked about how much we like that. Then number four, I have Exo Squad. Now, if you might not remember this, but this was a really cool, like, mech warrior show where these guys flew around space and they were fighting this alien race and these really cool mechs and there was always all these battles and each character was so well developed uh i just loved it it only was on for like a season or two and it was always hard for me to watch but whenever i could i loved absolutely loved that show so that was amazing that i i don't remember but that that'll bring up something like we said this has been going on since the 1960s Brian's mm-hmm. a few years apart from me, so he's going to have memories of different ones that, that he remembers that. anyway. Now, mo- he'll remember most of the ones I'm going to talk about, but... Yeah, that's, uh, that's one, though, that I, I didn't even remember, so yeah. we couldn't... Exo Squad, that was, that was an amazing one. Then we have uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 2. I I'm not sure that would two. come up. <laughs> Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, that was one of my favorite, with Bebop and Rocksteady and Krang and all... Uh, I mean, the adventure was great. I, was, I would watch the live-action movie... Uh, and then I watch a cartoon, or I'd watch the cartoon, and then I watch a live action movie. I mean, they just it, it just fit. I love Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. That was I great. Just, that almost made my list. That was very mm-hmm. very close to making my list. Too. So there you go. Uh, then my number two uh, best Saturday morning cartoon, my penultimate, if you will, two. the Spider Man. Yeah, Spider Man. Good. That is a good one, Brian. Yeah, because that Spider-Man one, they they ripped a lot of things straight from the comics, and they did it so well. And it went on for like four or five years. They did the Venom. They did Carnage. They did everything, Dr. Octopus. They they just fleshed out all the greatest of the Spider-Man stories, ending it with the Secret Wars thing, which was amazing. Yeah. It just Well, that didn't even just, end it. That was the second to last part. That, I guess that's true. And then which there was, was something. And, and then they topped and, that. Yeah. 
And then the, the whole time, tra- like bringing all the Spider-Men together yeah. from different dimensions. Yeah, it was just absolutely amazing. Just spectacular. Just, it, you can't beat it. It, it really, it, well, you can beat it because I have one more on my list, but it, it was honestly one of my favorite cartoons still to this day it holds up i haven't seen it for a couple years but when i saw it a couple years ago it was it was great and i will say and we're talking about uh spider-man i think the official is spider-man the the animated series there Mm -hmm. there were other spider-man series i have seen some of the others they i yeah they did not appeal to me Mm -hmm. as much there was one animated series like a year later too uh Mm -hmm. ultimate spider-man it was it was not as good that the spider-man the animated series from the the mid 90s that was that was where it was at. All right, Brian. So are we doing, you want to do some honorable mentions? Do you have honorable mentions? I don't have any honorable mentions, no. Okay. Do you want to All do right. your number one? You do your number one. I'll do my number one. All right. My number one is actually Spider-Man, which you just said. So Spider-Man, the animated series. Uh, um, yeah. I think it had possibly the best ending segments of any uh Saturday morning cartoon show. Yeah, that I Secret Wars that the time travel thing was amazing. Yeah. I, I love the way that they, they so used amazing. Venom and Carnage yes. effectively. So good. Uh, they, so good. They didn't shy away from the the back and forth love story with, with Mary Jane for this kids show. Um, mm. They did the Green Goblin segments well, even though he wasn't a super focal character. They, they introduced us to a lot of different people, different people from the Marvel Universe. Mm-hmm. They brought in the Corp- X Men at one point. They there had was a Blade cross. in there at one point. They had Blade wasn't. Yeah, <laughs> it was they, great. It was great. They did a very good job. They and you know they had good humor. They had good timing with with Spider Man. Good action, and I don't know it. It all it worked out. All of it. I want all to watch it. it again right now. Well, you should do that while I give my number one. And my number one is one that popped up on Brendan's list. You all can probably guess the way I raved about it. It's X-Men. That's my number one Saturday morning cartoon. I can't blame you. Yeah, so. yeah, I mean, it, it, it needs to be there. Like, so we the just base. disagree on the placement of our uh, yeah. of our Marvel top shows. Uh, but but they're shows. all in there. Those two shows are where, I mean, because we did literally – there's us and we're multiple siblings and you would get to pick one show. Then one person gets to pick the next show. Me and Brendan would team together so that we could watch those shows, especially Spider-Man. So it's just, it was, it was amazing. I loved them and we need more quality cartoons like that. And we are kind of getting them. You get stuff like young justice and so, there's other really cool ones out there. So I'm not trying to say they've gone the way of the dinosaur, those cool cartoons, but kids just won't get the Saturday morning experience. Like we did. Well, I don't think in a lot of those, uh, like young, I don't know about Young Justice, but a lot of the cartoons now that are of high quality from like the comic book makers are are actually not even geared towards kids anymore. We don't have yeah. Saturday morning cartoon blocks anymore, although I've heard some talk of trying to revive some companies trying to revive it, but we'll not see. as much as there used to be. Yeah, it, it just won't be have to be the phenomenon that it used to be. So, but that was our list. Hit us up. Let us know what your top five Saturday morning cartoons of were all time, or let us know if you're just young, too young to remember them because they cut them off the air before you got there. Uh, hit us up. Comments down below, of course. At what's my face on Twitter, Google Buzz and Facebook. Always good ways of getting a hold of us.